All right, hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use uh, Hashcat, which is part of Kali Linux. It's already installed on Kali Linux. So I'm going to get my virtual machine up and running here. Um, in the previous one, I got Kali Linux kind of all set up on here. Uh, remember that we're just going to be booting from the ISO file um, to be able to run this. So uh, what is Hashcat? So Hashcat can be used... Um, to be able to basically decrypt, um, to be able to decrypt hashes um, into like their password form. Um, and it's like a very powerful tool. You can use it with a uh, password list. So a password list is just a, or it's also uh, called a dictionary attack, but it's a, it's a list of commonly used passwords. And then you just compare the hashes of those commonly used passwords to the hash that you have and see which one is right. That's actually a relatively quick attack. Um, ha with Hashcat, you can actually add rules to that. So like an uppercase, lowercase, add numbers and symbols. So if you have a password list with all lowercase words, you can add a rule to uppercase the first letter of every word and try that combination and all those different kinds of things. Um, that's actually a, a much better type of cracking, um, oh, better way to crack a password than what we're going to do. We're going to actually be using a Hashcat to brute force um, a password. So that's trying every single combination. So you try A, then you try B, then C, then D, and you try then AA, AB, AC, AD, and every kind of combination there. So depending on the length of the password, that can take minutes, hours, even years if the password is long enough. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do in here is I'm going to create a, um, I'm going to create a folder called hashes. Okay, and then I'm going to type in cd and I'm going to cd into that folder. Okay, so um, these are Linux commands that you don't necessarily have to know, um, but, um, you know, they're just kind of nice. Oh, by the way, um, I opened up the terminal right here, so I clicked on terminal um, to be able to open that up. And then I can type in ls, by the way. ls will show you, like, all of the different folders. You can see the folder that I just created, cd into that, hashes, and now when I type in ls, there's nothing in here. Uh, now that I'm in this hashes folder, you can see that I'm in the hashes folder right there. I am going to um, type in nano, and we'll go, we'll go, we'll call this hash dot hash. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and um, go into here. So I'm going to open up, come over here to Firefox. I'm going to open up Firefox, and there's actually a really helpful website that we're going to use. Um, called md5.cz, um, and that'll automatically um, make some md5 hashes for us. So I'm going to click right up here, and I'm going to type in md5.cz. Okay, and we're going to make uh, some very basic md5 hashes. So remember, a hash is basically just a way to scramble a password. So you don't want to leave a password in plain text on a server, otherwise, if anyone got a hold of that, it would be like instantly the person would have um, the passwords for everybody. So what they do is they create these, um, they hash the password, which is basically encrypting the password. Um, and there's lots of different ways to hash a password. One of the most common ways is called an MD5 hash. Um, but there's lots of different ways to hash a password. Again, the hash is just an encryption. So we're going to try a very simple password, just the letter A, okay? And here's the hash for, the, here's the MD5 hash for the letter A. So I'm going to select that, just clicked on it once, right-click on it, and then I'm going to go to copy. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go to edit and paste. And then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Now let's go back to Firefox. So I'll click back on Firefox. Now let's try a two letter. So I'm gonna try like ZZ. Then I'm gonna click hash. Here's the hash right there. Right click on that, go to copy, minimize this, come back over here. I'm gonna right click and paste it. Now let's try a three word hash. 
So I'll try the word cat. Hash. Yeah, let's try, um, okay, cat will work. Hash that. Copy this. Minimize. Paste. Now let's try a three-letter word, but one with a number in it. So let's try, I don't know, QW2. This will be a this will be a good one. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit this hash. Okay. We'll copy this one right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and minimize. Paste this hash into here. And let's try one more hash. Let's hash one more thing. Let's try a four-letter word. I'll just try test. Go ahead and hash that. Copy that hash, minimize, and hit enter, or paste it in here. So I have one, two, three, four, five different hashes. You can use different, you can hash different things. Um, in fact, I encourage you to, um, but try to do a one letter word, a two letter word, a three letter word, a three symbol, like two letters and a number, and then finally a four letter word. But go ahead and pick whatever you want. If you wanted for your four letter one to be Z, 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 that would be good. And do not use what I use. <coughs> Create your own um, hashes. So now that we have that, I want to go ahead and save this file. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Control O. Um, on my keyboard and the control key I have to hit is the one that's on the left side of the keyboard, control and O, and then I hit enter, and now I'm going to hit control X to exit out. All right. Okay, sorry about that. I just had to pause the video for a second. Okay, so we have, if I type in cat right now, and I type in my hash dot hash, I can just see a list of all of the hashes that I have. So this would be like... Um, uh, the way that a hacker would get access to these is um, on a server, a lot of times they're not storing the passwords in plain text, but they do have a, a file um, that is, is accessible. It's accessible on the web that is storing the passwords in hashes. So what a hacker will do is they will figure out where that database file is stored and a database file is just basically a file that contains usernames and passwords but they'll find that file that's stored on the internet that contains the list of hashes of passwords of all of their users and it'll be probably it won't be five hashes like this it'll probably be um, hundreds or thousands depending on the amount of users so once you have this list of hashes okay well what do you do next um, well, the next thing is we need to figure out what type of hash was used. So, um, like I said, there are hundreds of different uh, hashes out there. Uh, again, a hash is a way to just encrypt a password. So, we don't know how these passwords were encrypted. So, we're just going to select one of them right here. Just going to select one. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to copy. And I'm going to use this program called Hash, I D E N T I F. I think that that's how you spell hash identifier. Um, <coughs> hold on one second. Let's see. I have it right here. Um, it's hash I D E N T I F I E R. Okay. And now that we have hash identifier open, <coughs> I'm just going to right click and paste in just one of the hashes that I had. And I'm going to hit enter. Um, and then I'm going to scroll all the way to the top. Um, right here, and it's going to tell me what the most probable hash used. So there's two types of hashes, MD5 and then a domain cache credentials, which probably isn't used. This is very rare. And then least possible. So this program right here, Hash Identifier, identified the hash that we copied in here as probably being an MD5 hash. So we know that that, that hash was encrypted using MD5. So now that we have that, I can hit Control C on my keyboard. We could try another one. Let's just try one more. Um, we'll try this one right here. So again, I'll select this one, right click on it, copy, come on down here, <coughs> paste this hash in, hit enter. And again, this one will come up with probably it's MD5. So we know this hash list right here. We know this list of different hashes are probably MD5. So we need to break out of this. So I can hit control C on my keyboard. It's the left control button and then C. Um, and when you hit those, it will automatically exit out of the program. So now that we've exited out of the program, we're going to be using hashcat. 
And I'm just going to run hash cat help really quick so that I can see my uh, the brute force um, exactly what we need to type. They like basically hash cat will tell you how to run this. So the first thing that we have right here, it's uh, we're going to type in. We're going to modify this slightly, <coughs> and I'm going to tell you what every, um, whoops, copy that, and then we're going to right-click here and paste. Um, so the first thing that we're doing is we type in Hashcat. That's basically saying we want to run the program Hashcat. Then we type in TAC A or dash A space 3. So that is saying what type of program, what type of attack do we want to do? Um, let me scroll down in here. I'm sorry. Um, so TAC, TAC A says, or dash A, I'm sorry. Dash A is what, it, what type of program do we want to run? And we want to run number three, which is brute force. So that's going to start with A, then B, then C. It's going to do every combination. Okay. The next thing is M. So this is the encryption type, okay? So the encryption type is... If we look up at this list, these are all of the different types of encryption that we can have. <clears throat> and if we scroll all the way up to the top here, we will see there's a lot. Zero is MD5. So if you wanted like to see MD4, that would be 900. SHA2 is 1700. So you have to look at the name of the hash right here. So uh, we use the hash identifier to identify the hash as being MD5. So we know that it's going to be um, MD5. We look at that number and it's number zero. So that dash M0 just means we're, uh, we think that this is the MD5 hash. This right here, example zero dot hash, we need to change that. We called our um, text file hash dot hash. And then right here, this is how many characters we have. So um, we're just gonna start off with one character. So we're gonna just change this to question mark A. And when we, um, because we're running this on a virtual machine, it's gonna go really slowly. So um, Hashcat uses your GPU or your graphics card to be able to try to hack these passwords. And number one, these computers have really bad graphics cards in them. And then number two, um, because we're running in a virtual machine, the virtual machine doesn't have access to the graphics card. So it's gonna run really poorly. So if I just hit enter right now, um, it's gonna say, hey, this is really not going to work. Are you sure you want to do this? If you can, you can type in dash dash force to force it. So we do. So I'm going to retype in that hash cat space dash a space number three space dash m space zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Space hash dot hash space. And then we just want to try one letter and we're going to type in dash dash force. F-O-R-C-E. And I'm going to hit enter. And right now, it's going to try just basically A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's going to try all of those different letters against the um, hash list that we have. So this will take a second to get going here. <coughs> and I'm going to pause the video right here because mine's going to take even longer because I'm recording right now. So... Okay, so that took, I don't know, another five or six seconds. <coughs> that was able to figure out this hash right here was A. So it was able to crack one of the five hashes that were in there. Um, and it kind of puts it up right there. So we know one of the passwords was A. So now I'm going to hit the up arrow on my keyboard to go ahead and this just basically paste in the last command that we used. And now I'm going to hit question mark A again. So this is going to try two characters now. It's going to try like A, 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 B, A, C, A, D. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And again, this is going to take some time. Okay, so this one got a little bit faster. And this one was able to detect, okay, we found one with two characters. We found the one that ZZ. So now this hash is equivalent to ZZ. And so we have now recovered two of the five hashes. Okay, we recovered the, the single one and now the double one. Now let's try a third. So we'll go question mark A again. So now we're going to try... You know, A, 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 B, A, A, C. As we do this, it's going to take longer and longer to go. So this one, it was able to get the two 
three letter hashes relatively quickly. So I got cat and the, my QW2. So those were those two passwords. So now four of our fa five hashes have been recovered. And let's see if we can get that sixth one. So now I'll add in a question mark A again here. And this is gonna go ahead and try four characters. And it actually got that one relatively quickly too. So here's my fourth one. Now, if we started to get into five, six, seven characters, <coughs> this is gonna take longer and longer to do. But you can see um, how this thing was able to decrypt those hashes relatively quickly. So this hash is equivalent to this password. And then once somebody does that, well, they have the passwords. And like I said, um, these, the, the databases or the files that contain these hashes are pretty open on the internet. It's not that hard to get access to them. It's just a matter of once you have access to that database, then all of a sudden you have to figure out, okay, what type of hashing did they use? And then let's go ahead and uh, brute force or use dictionary text or whatever. So yeah, that's how to use a, um, go ahead and try, let's try one more in here. So I'm going to type in nano hash dot hash. <coughs> Let's try one more in here. Let's try like test one, two, just test one, two. <coughs> Copy this one. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six characters long. Let's paste this one in here. Hit control O to save and hit enter. Control X to exit out. Now hit up twice, and I'm not gonna go through the testing five. This test is one, two, three, four, five, because we know that um, the new hash that we entered in there was six. We just really wanna see how long this is gonna take. So this is now gonna be six characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I hit enter, and it's gonna go ahead and start, and um, if I hit S here for the status, it's gonna show us like how many passwords this thing has to go through. So take a look here. We have to <coughs> we have to go through this many passwords when you have six characters long. That's how many different combinations it's trying. So I'll hit S and now this is the number. It's tried so far, I don't know, what is that? One mil one Two, three, one, two, three. That's 184 million six hundred and two thousand one hundred and twelve. Okay, so it's tried this many out of, and I don't even want to know what that number is. It's only at 0.3 percent. So I can keep hitting S on here, and it'll give us status updates. Okay, but I'm at like 0.6 percent now. It's estimating that this six um, to to try diff uh, six different uh, letters is gonna take approximately 20 hours. Okay, so we don't wanna wait 20 hours, but that's just showing you like the, the one letter passwords, the two letter, even the four letter passwords, um, those are cracked almost instantly. A five letter password, it would take hours, okay, but um, it, it would be okay to do. The six letter password can be cracked in about a day. It'll take about a day to be able to crack this password. If you had a seven letter password, um, that would take weeks um, to crack on a computer and an eight letter password would potentially take years to crack. So um, we can just keep hitting S. I'm not gonna let this run forever because um, we have about 19 hours and 45 minutes left until this is gonna be able to be cracked. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of this. I'm gonna hit Q um, and yeah, that's it. So uh, that's how to use Hashcat. Let me know if you have any questions.